Hey guys, Tarp Recycling FPV, and today I'm going to show you we are working on a, uh, let's see, we're going to do this right here. So we are working on this board right here, which is the uh, FrySky X4R. Uh, and the reason I'm working on this one, it's kind of an older board, but it is a, it is an excellent power powerhouse. I mean, it is a workhorse of a board. Um, and I'm having people asking me about it because I did a video a couple years ago on it. I guess it's a couple years ago now. In a while um, and uh, so I'm gonna do an updated video basically and this updated video is gonna cover some of the same topics sorry I got my phone going crazy here let me turn that off um, some of the same topics uh, except this time I'll get my coffee so hold on um, okay and one of the things is gonna be okay so this is the X4R now uh, FrySky also has an X4R SB right the SB means it comes with serial bus okay uh, or S bus uh, so you have S bus and on the X4R you don't so in the X4R is cheaper However, the, it is actually on here, and I'm going to show you how to get it, okay? And hopefully, we're going to do this without any mistakes. Um, but you have to be paid very close attention. So first thing I'm going to do, before we even get into the firmware and stuff, is I'm going to try to get this board under a microscope so I can show you what we're working with, right? So bear with me a second. I'm going to now flip screens here, just like that. Okay, so what you're looking at right now is the uh, board that you were just looking at earlier, but now I'm zoomed in on it, right? And what we want to pay attention to is this right here. Oops. Let me get a pointer here so I can use this. What you want to pay attention to, if I can get this pointer, is right here. You see this right here? This says uh, R35, and you have the R, right? Sorry, I shouldn't be looking at the screen. So R is right here, and the 5 is right here. We're going to focus on this side where the 5 is, okay? This is your S bus right here. You tap into that, and you've got S bus all of a sudden, all right? The other thing we want is we want to have an uninverted... Um, S port, okay, and the reason we want uninverted. Now here's your S port right here. Problem is, if you're running like an S4, if you're running an F4 board, you don't have a problem with this if you don't have a, a UART and you don't enable soft serial. However, there is the uninverted S port right here. So I'm going to show you how to connect all these and configure it, all right? And we're going to make it work. But just understand something: the soldering of this is very tricky, right? So I mean, you need to have a good solder, a good iron. I mean, very fine tip, good solder itself, and steady hands, which I don't have, okay? Um, but the first thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and let me clear this little table here. We want to go ahead and we want to um, do an update of our firmware, right? So I've already downloaded the firmware and I'm going to tell you that I have a section. Uh, let me do this real quick. I have a section of the website now uh, that I'm developing. It's just going to be for FrySky stuff. It's going to have every link of everything you need ever for FrySky, including videos and everything on help files. So I'm building it up. I started it today and uh, I'm going to transfer all the files I already have. It's going to take a little while, obviously, but I think it's going to be very helpful. Right now, I'm just grabbing my data cables. Um, but let me give you an idea of what I'm doing, okay? So if I can find the mouse here that I was using, which I just cleaned up this table. That's why now I can't find anything. All right, let me minimize this real quick, and let me go to the uh, minimize beta flight, and then I'll show you what I'm working on, okay? So let's go here, and let me show you the screen. So here's the screen, right? And here's our website, right? So there's a new section of the website. Well, not a new section. It's actually in the tutorials, right? So if you... Make this larger and then scroll down. So right here under tutorials, you're gonna see the tutorials link. And if you click that, this is the new page I'm working on. The new page is right here. It's only got two things on it right now because I haven't transferred this. I'm doing this, I did this part just for this page. But you're gonna have every single X4, X4R SB, XM Plus, uh, um, oh my god, um, R9 Mini, R9MM, I mean module stuff, radio stuff, everything's gonna be now on one page. All right, and I'm gonna do that for every manufacturer that I carry now. So instead of having multiple pages with different lessons, we're gonna have one page for like HGLRC, and you'll be able to scroll down and find the product you want, and from there you'll find all the files, the downloads, and you'll also find the videos like this one, okay? Gonna make it easy. It's gonna take me a little while, but it's gonna really be awesome for you guys because you won't have to be searching all over the web then, try to find a video that matches that, and also find the drivers and the manual and everything. It's all gonna be in one spot. So, so far, this is kind of the look. You have the X4R, here's the downloads page, here's the manual. The manual's actually saved on our site. The downloads page will take you to Price Guy's site. And then below this will be the next dot, which will say tutorial videos. And you'll be able to click and see the videos like this one, okay? So let's, I've already downloaded the firmware update, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn my radio on. All right. Welcome to okay, and I've set up, I've set up something called X4R test, which you can see right there. And I'm hoping to be able to keep this in the uh, screen. So let's see if we can do that, okay? All right, so let me go ahead and open this up. And we're going to set up, I think what I'll do is I'll try to turn it this way so I've got more area to work with. All right, and I'm going to plug in my uh, data cable here. Again, we have these on the website if you're ever needing it. Um, try to price it extremely fair. I think it's like two bucks. 
it's nothing big at all by any means. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and just solder these on. Uh, since these have already been soldered, I'm not worried about it, but I do have to give you the other angle here because I need to use the old man glasses for a second. So hang tight and let's do that. Okay, here we go. So we're just gonna solder one. This out of the ground, there we go two. It's kind of a sloppy solder, but it works. Okay, I'm not here trying to win an award for it. I'm just trying to get the job done so I can show you guys what you should be looking for when you do it. Although the data cable doesn't really need that much, you don't need to give it that much attention. Just get it there to hold for a second, right? All right, so that's ready to go. So now we'll go back to this view. And there we go, right? So we're ready to do this. So we're gonna hold down our menu screen, go here, and then I'm gonna go to firmware, find my FrySky uh, RX firmware updates, click that, go to X4, click that, find the one I want, not EU, hold it down and flash it. Okay, now what you're not going to see, well, I guess you, maybe you can a little bit, is there is a blinking red light, but it's underneath because the board's turned upside down because we really need to access this side of the board to do the work that we're going to do. And I do have these, if you want to look real quick, um, uh, if you want to look here, I do have these on our uh, under our used open box. Oh, yeah, and I put this new garage sale link, by the way, if you guys are interested. There's only two things on here now, but I'm going to put a bunch of stuff and I'm going to open it up for members as well. Post things that are not drone related, but that you want to sell. Uh, so anyways, if you go under used and open box and you go under used RX and you will see these, okay? You will see the, um, right here, the X4R SB and there's the X4R without serial bus, right? So if you buy one of those for like nine bucks or 10 bucks, um, I did click on it, right? Yeah. Uh, you can then convert it to SB and it'll be just fine. And this is the old video I did. Um, uh, oh my God, let me see this. Holy crap. I can't imagine. Look at that. Look how much... I look so younger there, boy. Such a get this off the screen. Get this. Off. Why are these average? There you go. Look at that. Boom. Look at that right there. Young guy. Mm, ain't hot. Look at the beard. Man, I'm heavier. Anyways, all right. So screw all that. We're gonna go back here. But um, getting back to our radio now. Uh, there we go. We are done updating. So we're gonna click OK. Exit. 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 Close. And then get out of this because we don't need it right now. Oh, yeah. We're not gonna need it now. We'll we'll bind in just a minute. So let me move the radio out. Open this kickstand up here real quick and desolder these now <sighs> and i'll try to keep my big melon out of the screen if i can here it goes it's gonna be quick one two and three okay now i'm gonna go ahead and with this little stand that i've made because i find this stand to be much easier to work with so um i'm gonna go ahead now and i'm actually gonna solder uh this to the um board that it's going to go on as, as a test okay so this is the uh, this is a, 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 a lumineer board it's an f4 board and the reason we're doing f4 is because f4 is the one that has the hardest time or one of the ones that has the hardest time with uh uninverted or with inverted signals uh which is what fry sky puts by default so if you look at this you're gonna have ground you're gonna have positive you're gonna have s bus here so we're just gonna go ahead and quickly solder these on uh and let me see if i can do this easily go to ground Again, I'm just doing this for demo purposes, so please, when you solder, do as I say, not as I do, and take your time, please. Okay? I can tell the old solder I put on these wires is terrible. From a couple years ago, it has to be, so let me just clean that up real quick, because that's not going to work. Move this out of the way. Add some solder here. And let's go ahead... From now put the ground down. I'm gonna clean this up. Okay, fine. That was a pain. Very sloppy, but it'll do for now. Positive is fine. And then we're gonna go ahead. Okay, so here's our S bus, right? But it won't work. We don't have S bus on here, right? So now we have to figure out what to do. And this is where step one comes into play, okay? Step one is gonna be that we now have to add S bus to this. And to do that, we have to get to the right. We have to basically do the hack, right? So here's the hack, and I'm gonna to try to get this to kind of sit, because I, I wanna do this. Oh, let's see, the best way to do this is gonna to be to turn it around. So let me do that. Put this down. All right, and okay, so the spot that we're looking for, like I told you before, is this, piece right here which I'm gonna get the magnifier now right and so bear with me a second and let me let me set this up real quick 
This way I can use this and still be able to um, show you guys the work that's being done. So let me just find that real quick, okay? We are looking for this spot, right? If I can find it. Sorry, I know you guys can't see what I'm doing, but here it is. Okay, so I'll, now I'll turn the screen on for you guys to be able to see. All right, there we go, okay? So um, here's what we got. And there's that 35 again, you saw the 35, and we're working on the spot that is the number five. Okay, now I'm gonna try to do this with this magnifying glass having to be a little bit away so that you guys can look in that. So I'm gonna end up hitting this damn thing about 100 times, I think, but let me just make sure I can do this without screwing it up. I think that'll be okay. I think you guys can see I think so. And so what we're aiming for, guys, is we're actually be going, whoa. we're actually gonna be working with that right there, okay? And so what we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and add a little bit of solder to it, and you need to have a very steady hand and some and a fine, a hot and fine needle here, right? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna basically pretend it right there. Just put, if you can, the solder will tend to run up. So I gotta make sure I get this on there. Okay, I think that'll be enough to get my wire to hold. And now what I wanna do is I'm just gonna find a wire. And I have a bag of wires here, so let me see. I'm just gonna grab a, a green wire that I've made. Give me one second, let me cut this wire real quick. Sorry for all the shaking, the magnifying glass is actually hitting the piece, but I am doing my best to not cause too much wobbleness. Okay, so, and this also has to be a very fine wire because you're really, really trying to fit this on in a very narrow gap. So here's my wire. This may be even too long. There's my wire right there, and I want to get it to sit right here. So I better tin this up even better because that's not going to work. Okay, and I want it to get right here. My zip tie is kind of in the way. That's all right. Let's see. That wire is going to be way too long. So let me go ahead and trim this down a little bit. And oh. hey, babe. Okay, mama. Okay. Love you. Love you. Bye. See you when you get back. Drive safe. Yes, sir. It's my wife. She's going to pick up my son from school. I get to see my boys this weekend. Okay, so just place it right where it needs to be, right there, and get it soldered on. Okay, and try your best because this is not an easy solder. And I'm hoping that I tinned it well enough. I was trying to think of it. Maybe I didn't. Is that on there? That is. And there we go. So we now have our patch right here onto the 35, right? And to be honest with you, at this point, hit it with some hot glue because I'm going to tell you right now, you do not want this thing coming off. So hit it with some hot glue and then uh, get it to hold nicely. So I'm just gonna put a dab of hot glue right here. There we go. I'm gonna let it kind of sit right on there. All right, and cover the whole thing. That way if the wire does pull, it pulls out. And then what I'm gonna do is when I turn the wire, I'm gonna actually, and you could turn it either way. I guess I could turn it this way if I wanted to, except that I need to solder this next piece. So maybe I'll wait just a minute, all right? So what we're going to do now is we've got our first piece done on the 35 and now what we're going to do is we're going to grab this next piece which is the yellow wire that I'm going to use and this is going to be our S port. Okay, this is going to be our inverted S port. I'm going to trim this up too. And this one is going to go in an even more awkward place and I definitely know that this, this zip tie is going to be in the way now. Okay, so this one is going to go, where's my little pointer ahead? Okay, right here. Okay, right there. Right above C28, you're gonna solder that piece right there. All right, now to do that, I have to kind of turn this because it's at a weird angle for me. Uh, so I'm gonna put this just here and then I'm gonna move the, mi the microscope so you can see it. Hopefully you'll be able to see it, okay? So there you go, there's your C28. And there's where we're going. And again, because I'm right-handed, it's gonna get all kinds of screwed up, but we're gonna see what happens, okay? So C28, we're gonna go ahead and tin it like we did the other one. So let's go ahead and just kind of get as close as we can. Give us a little bit of solder right there. Okay. 
Okay, and now we're going to take our yellow wire, which I've already cut. I'm going to tin that up. We're going to bring that in and put it right there, okay? Well, I guess I'll go over the green. Probably be easier for now. And you want to solder that right down there, okay? And that is a good connection there. So we've got the C28 done. We had the R35 done. So now we're going to go ahead and glue this as well. Go ahead and put a nice little drop on there. All right. And now you can trace the wires out and just glue them so that when they do pull, if they do pull for the first time, it will not be where they were soldered. It'll be somewhere else. Okay. And I know that doesn't look good, but I'm not really worried about the looks as much as I'm worried about making sure that this stuff sticks. Okay. So we'll let that cool for a second. Okay. So now what we've done is we have now done, um, we've done an inverted uh, S bus and we've done an inverted S port. Okay. The S bus is important because this board doesn't have S bus as far as they're concerned. And the S port is important because if you're running an F4 board and you don't have an open UART or a UART that handles inverted, usually a UART one, uh, which is going to be used for your S bus anyway, normally, um, you can use a soft serial if you have a UART two, but if you don't have a UART two and UART one is being used, you're out of luck for the most part. Okay. So this is one of those workarounds. Now, to make this work properly, uh, I'm going to, without messing up the wires too much, I'm going to take this now, I'm going to turn the board around, and I'm just going to get ready to solder these to the board, okay? So let me get out of, you know, it would be kind of cool if you could watch it like that, but there's no way I could, um, I don't think there's any way I could do this properly. Well, we'll see, we'll see. I, I don't know, we'll try it. Uh, I haven't worked like under something like this, but this may work, who knows? It may jiggle too much or whatever. We do remember that the green, so here's our S bus on the board, right? And so we do remember that the green is the S bus. And so I don't need that much cable. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna like that too much. So let me get this out of here. And let me just go back to using the top camera, which is gonna be right there. And let's do that instead, okay? So let's zoom in and show you what we're gonna be doing. And then what I'll have to do though, is I'm gonna have to um, switch cameras for a second because uh, I need to use the old bank goggles. So here goes nothing. Okay, so let me just kind of straighten this up. Um, all right, and I know it's kind of a bright light, so I'm hoping that we can do this without blinding you guys. All right, so the first thing is we're gonna to try to get to the, um, uh, which we'll call it here, and let me see if I can change the lighting, sorry. I just don't want this. Uh, let's see, manual? I cannot adjust that one, so I'll just try to work with the lighting as it is. Let me see. There we go. Hold on. I think I can now. So if I put this lighting here, and I try not to blind you guys, then what I can do is I can go to exposure, and do a manual, and I think, I don't know what I'm doing here, but ooh, that's not it. Let's bring it down. That, that may be good, right? Okay. We'll try that. See how that is for now. See if we can zoom in a little bit more. Move this closer to your camera. Boom. That'll work, I guess. Okay, so for right now, and this is just temporary until I've done soldering, but for right now, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and take the, um, this is the S-Bus cable that we created, right? And so we want to go ahead and, and tin that. So let me go ahead and get this uh, stripped down and tinned, just like so. And I'm going to dip it in the uh, flux paste here. Okay, twist that real good so it's nice. And the, the, the strands aren't coming apart. Grab my solder and let's get to it, right? So we're gonna tin this part first, just like that, okay? And then we're gonna cut, uh, people coming on the property here. Sorry guys for the beef, all right? We'll cut this like that. And now we're gonna go ahead and put it down on the S-Bus, all right? So here it goes, right there. Okay, so now we're on our S bus and that's good. I think that's on there pretty good. Yeah, it is, it is. Especially for this demo, it's gonna be just fine. Now, the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to find our, um, uh, I need coffee, hold on. We're gonna to wanna to find our S port that we're gonna use. So, because we've got uninverted S port, and this is an S port four board, we're in pretty good shape now, right? So we just wanna find a spot to put it. So let's look for an open uh, UR, right? Um, hmm. 
I can't read what this says, but I know this is something here, and that is, I just don't know what it is, and I can't remember. Uh, that must be, this is TX3, I think, and RX3. And I don't know what this TX is, though. I'm not really sure. Let me see. I don't know how the manual on this, so I'm not going to be able to tell you really, but let's see if I can get some of this cleared off. Okay, I believe that's TX3 right there. So we're just, for the sake of just doing this right now, we're going to use TX3. So let me measure my wire here. That should be good. Let me go ahead and cut this. What the hell is that noise? Oh, school buses, gotcha. All right, so let's go ahead and strip this wire down. And I am now working to clean my mess up as I go because I spent eight hours cleaning this morning, which is a huge waste of time. But it's because I'm sloppy when it comes to doing this and then cleaning up. And my wife reminded me of that. All right, so let's go ahead and turn this. Okay. And then let's put it on TX, uh, Three, okay. There we go. That didn't turn worth the crap, did it? No, it didn't. No, I don't. Turn that wire again. That was terrible. There we go. All right. So now, if everything is done correctly, that's it. I mean, we literally have nothing else to do. We've done our firmware update, right? We've got everything set. All I need to do now is just get some fasteners to hold this down for a little bit. So I'm gonna put a couple on here just for the sake of holding it down. All right. Oh, I've got to, hold on. I've got to, um, I forgot. I have got to pair this with my radio. So let's lift this back up real quick. And the button is right. Where did I put the button? Oh boy. Okay, so the button, looks like I'm gonna be cutting this for a minute. Okay, unfortunately, the button is not as close as I want it to be. So let's just take this off and let me turn this over. And the button is right here, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my clips in the board and I'll give you guys a top angle of that. Uh, where the hell is the top angle? Is this top, yeah, that's top angle. Okay, so let's get this off. And there we go, and let's do that, and let's zoom out, and bring this down, and stop making this thing look all crazy. Okay, and throw the trash away, that's right, throw the trash away, I can hear her now in my ears, throw it away, so I'm throwing it. All right, don't need those, don't need this, don't need these, and if she was watching, she would see that I did my part. Okay, so what we need to do now is bind this, okay, and to bind it, we're just gonna basically do the same standard uh, procedure like normal, where we hold the button once we turn it on. So I'm using a clip here, uh, which is fed from my AC to DC converter. So let me go ahead and put this on. There's positive and there's ground. And I'm gonna give it a 12 volt. Let me give it 12 volts here. All right, and then what I'm gonna do for you guys is I'm gonna go ahead and plug this into Betaflight so that you can also watch on the screen and see what's going on. Okay, so just bear with me because I'm afraid that if I knock this too hard, I may ground it out. So I'm gonna try to be very careful. All right, so let's close this, put this camera back up, and let's open Betaflight. And now we can have a uh, three view setup. One, two, and three. There we go. All right, so let's do that. Boom, there we go. Okay, so uh, we've got our, our uh, pin here, and then we've got our Betaflight, right? Let's go ahead and first of all get ready to uh, bind. So I'm just going to move the radio right here and get the binding process started. Let me get this turned on. Welcome to OpenTX. Okay, page. Mode on. And let's go ahead. It's number 44, so I'm going to tell, I'll turn this off. Okay, now I've got to get a grip on this thing without knocking everything all over the place. So let me just do that. I'm going to tell it to start binding. So it's going to start chirping. Telemetry on, 16 channel. Okay. There's that, and I'm gonna hold the button down. I wish I could show you this though. You know what, maybe if I put this, um, where's that piece? Oh, you gotta be kidding me, I'm cleaning up and I can't find anything, that doesn't make any sense. What's the point of cleaning if you can't find anything? Oh, I had that one piece, you guys can probably see it from where you're at, I can't though. Where's that one white piece that just, oh here it is, okay. So I'm gonna try to kind of wiggle this around to where we can use it so I can set this on. 
hopefully. I don't know. Maybe that's not a good idea. But I do want to kind of rest it so you can see what I'm working with. So let me see if I can do that real quick. Yeah, that might work. Oh, uh, not really. What a pain in the ass this thing is. Okay, let me turn this around. Try it this way. Okay. There. All right, that's better. Okay, so I'm going to hold this down. Even though I know I'm missing that, that standoff there, which doesn't sit well with me. So I'm going to put the standoff in. Oh my God, I can't speak any more of a pain right now. Sorry, guys. I just... It's making me mad. There we go. All right, so everything's in now. Holy cow. Here, I'm going to go ahead and just screw this down so I don't lose it. There we go. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to hold the bind button down, turn it on. And we should see the green light with the red blinking. And as you can see right there, I hope you can see, um, that's not the right camera, that's the right camera. As you can see right there, you've got the, I guess you can see it's kind of blurred, but there you go, okay? So we are now bound. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna turn my radio, tell it to stop binding, and then press exit a bunch of times, okay? And then I'm going to turn the power off. And now I'm gonna turn it back on, okay? Now we have signal. And as you can see right here, we have our RSSI uh, um, graph uh, strength meter, so we know that we are connected, okay? But remember now, we're using SBUS, and this wasn't supposed to have SBUS, so we're gonna see how well it went, okay? To do that, I think I'm gonna have to actually make room for both things to fit in the video, so let's try it like this, okay? <sighs> okay, so um, let's go to reset. Now I haven't used this board in God knows when, so I don't know how long it's been, so I don't know if it's even ready. Uh, or if it's even updated, but it is saying you aren't one for SBUS. So we'll leave that. Let's go to configuration and let's go to make sure that we have SBUS on. We are going to be testing telemetry later, so I'm just going to leave that. I'm going to click save and reboot. And we did use TX3, so I'm going to go back to ports real quick. This is probably an old version of Betaflight on here too. I'm going to go back to ports real quick and make sure that we turn on uh, smart. Oh, it is on. Okay, well then there's that. So let's go to receiver and see. Well, there you go. Done. That's how easy it was. Wow, that was pretty easy, actually. So we just took SBUS. We just found SBUS, right? And we were able to take it off of a board that doesn't have SBUS, and we got it to work. So look at that. We move our controller. Boom. We got, look at this. I mean, everything's, everything's functioning. So you just got an SBUS controller out of a non-SBUS controller. Okay, or SBUS signal out of a non-SBUS. So they said, okay. Now the trick is to do telemetry. So we had to find inverted S port, right? Because uh, uh, uninverted, sorry, because inverted is what comes with it, which is the yellow cable that came from the factory, which you can see right there. But that won't work on UART 3 because F4 boards don't invert on UART 3 for the most part, right? So let's see what we got. So if we go to our radio and we hold, uh, sorry, we press the menu button and just hold page down, go backwards. I'm going to go ahead and tell it that I want it to, um, well, I think you kind of see it. I actually be working. I've already set this up. But let me, I'm going to tell it to delete all sensors. And now look, okay? What comes default with this is going to be two sensors, usually. usually. All right, and I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna tell it to start. Well, first let me go to here, and let me see what I have for um, my, um, S, uh, my telemetry setting. So I'm gonna go into Betaflight, and I'm gonna type set TLM and hit enter. Whoops, didn't go, did it set? Yeah, there it is. Okay, and it says telemetry, uh, telemetry switch is off. Telemetry inverted is on, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to play around with this a little bit. We're going to say, okay, set telemetry underscore inverted equals off. Okay. We're going to leave half duplex and everything else. So there we go. We're going to click save. Okay. Now, when we connect to this board and we attempt to do telemetry, and we're going to, so we're going to tell it now, we want it to discover all senses, all, all sensors, new sensors, right? So we're going to hit enter, okay? And what we're going to look at here is that under this, what we're looking for really is, or what I'm looking for, is this um, VFAS. See that VFAS right there? It's exactly what I wanted. Now I've got, if you look at my board, and here, let me do this as a two-page. So let's go one, two, there you go. All right, so let's do that. All right, if you look up here on Betaflight, you're going to see where it says I've got 12.3, and I'm going to adjust it down and watch my controller move. 
See that? Look at that. Awesome. So we've now got uh, telemetry, uh, and we have um, we have our RSSI. We have telemetry. Uh, let me do something. Sorry, I'm I'm actually messing with the screen here. So one, two, three. There we go. We'll do it this way. Okay. So we have RSSI. We have telemetry. We have S plus. Everything working on an F4 board on UART3 and we had no problem at all, okay? So the idea here is you can get inverted, you can get uninverted, you can pull SBUS, and you can do all this from the X4, all right? And honestly, the X4 is a powerhouse of a receiver. So now when you're done and everything's done, you see these hacks and how they work, now you basically wanna get your wire set because if they come off, it's a real pain to put them back on and you have no idea, you know, during flight if you can have that problem. So you wanna get it set and then heat shrink the whole thing. I'm gonna show you how that works now and then we're gonna call it a day. We did it and it's an awesome job and I'm really happy. With it. And this is gonna be, connected. this is actually gonna be going for sale. So I'm gonna sell it like it is now. So if any of you need this, uh, let me turn my radio off, sorry. If, if any of you need connected. it, um, just let me know. All right, so here goes. So now what we're gonna do is let's get down to the, uh, oops, sorry, bear with me. There, boom, okay. Now, now that this is done and everything looks good, what we wanna do is we want to um, close it up and be done with it now. So let me turn off the power first, okay? Because we definitely don't need power. And let's take these off. We don't need these anymore, all right? And let's go ahead and remove our board. We can take off our USB now because we don't need that either. Take off our fastener. I'm gonna put this on here to hold it. Okay. And now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and, and uh, desolder uh, what we've done here because we need to get it off the board so we can... Uh, actually, I only need to desolder these two because I'll leave the plug and just plug it back in. So let me just get this off. Oh, boy. Okay, yeah. That's what happens when I don't use my magnifying, but that's okay. I'll clean all that up in just a minute. Okay, so here we go. Now that that's done, we can move this out of the way. And here we have our board, right? So with our board now done, and we've hot glued this side, my recommendation is to do the following. I would, uh, where is my hot glue stick that was in here? It fell out. So now I gotta find it. Oh, darn it. I gotta find everything again. I don't know where it went. So I'll just grab it. Okay. So what I would recommend you do is I would recommend that you hot glue your plug here. And just real thin. You don't have to go crazy on this part, okay? But I would get right on the back of it too. And make sure you've hot glued your stuff here. And then do me a favor and just go back over your uh, antenna wires, okay? And we're gonna hang that back up. And we're gonna wait for this to cool. It's kinda of hot right now. All right. All right. Okay, now while that's cooling, I'm gonna get, I hope I have some. I'm not sure if I really have any or not actually. So let me see. I'm gonna find some. I need some, um, I need some heat shrink that is this size. I haven't used this board in so long. I don't think I keep the heat shrink here anymore. Let me see. That's not gonna work. All right, I gotta find something real quick. So give me a second and I will go and try to pull something even if it's a whoppy jaw attempt to make this work just so you guys can see <laughs> what you're supposed to do or what it should look like even though I'm gonna probably screw it up. Hold on one second. <coughs> I'm just going to go get some clear stuff, see if we can use that. I'm trying, we'll see. able to get this to shrink down enough we'll see i don't know this is really this is a long shot here probably won't work but at least i can give you an idea okay guys that's the whole whole point is to just try to give you an idea okay so i mean ideally this thing would be covering this the whole way 
Uh, that's not gonna work here, so let me just see the best way I could try to finagle this while I'm, first of all, let me get all the wires to go the right direction. All right, so let's just do that and twist those together. Leave that just like that. Okay. And then I gotta get creative here, but uh, I'm thinking if I did this, because I do not have, maybe if I did that and this, I don't know. I'm gonna go for a long shot, like I said. So let's just see what happens. No making fun. I don't have the heat shrink here for this one, but I will. I just don't have it right now. So, so you don't get to pick. Okay, hold on. Oh, come on. I'm just gonna see if this will work, okay? There we go. Gotta get creative. I hope it works. All right, so there we go. We'll see what happens. <laughs> okay, just please remember this isn't ideal, but it's just for the purpose of showing it that we're protecting everything. Although I'm not sure at this point how protected it will be given the way I've done this, but let's just see. This this is a very, this is like a four to one uh, heat shrink, so it's gonna get really small. Um, it's probably my favorite heat shrink, but it's definitely the more expensive of the options to use. Uh, but we should see something somewhat positive come out of this, hopefully. Something, hopefully. Oh, I think I may be getting too close here. To I don't think it's going to shrink much more than that, but... Yeah, I think it's done. That's too bad. We were close. We were close. All right, well, anyways... So, yeah, you don't want it to look like this, obviously, but, I mean, okay, if I pinch this closed, then it's protected. All right, and for all purposes right now, uh, it could be used to fly like this. Um, just very ugly, but uh, it's protected, and uh, your components, and this is very hard. Uh, this, this, this uh, uh, what's the word? This uh, cools and makes it very hard, like a, like a plastic, like a hard, it's, it's, it's uh, um, what's it called? Oh, I can't remember now is the P, whatever kind of um, heat shrink this is. It's like a plastic, was it called poly? Poly something like Anyways, so this is what I use, this is what we use on lipos to protect our lipos. Uh, but um, get a heat shrink that fits, obviously, but this is it. So now you've got all your stuff here and you've got all your stuff converted from a $9 used flight controller uh, receiver. Um, all right, so hopefully guys, I'm sorry, I don't have the right heat shrink for this, but this is a good lesson, man. I mean, it's really good stuff and it makes, it gives us a really good value, okay? So, uh, and it may not look pretty, but it uh, definitely flies pretty and it's got a great signal strength, great RSSI. Um, so anyways, that's it. All right, hope that helps guys. That's one video I've been, I know a customer asked me about doing the X4R and how to convert it and kind of update our video that we've done two years ago. Hope that helps you guys. If you have any questions, hit me up. You can always reach me at targetcyclonefpv.com and please uh, make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube and follow us and do something whatever you do like us on facebook again there's my email the three lines there one two three and uh, other than that god bless safe flying spend time with your family guys we'll see you soon bye